life lessons foretold. Stay golden, girls and boys. Stay golden. Hey babes, it's me, Courtney, and you're tuned in to Stay Golden, Golden Grades. Is it blasphemous to talk about Game of Thrones in the introduction to a Golden Grades episode? Because of the fact of the matter is, I am seeped deep. We are actually really big fans of the Game of Thrones universe here, and it correlates to the Golden Girls because we do have some Game of Thrones inspired playlists here on the channel. We did a Dorothy and Stannis reimagination of what their relationship would have looked like. Hodor trying to hold the door for Dorothy slamming. If you're a fan of Game of Thrones, I want to know in the comments below, who do you think uh, the Golden Girls correlate to as a Game of Thrones character? I'm on board for this. I'm very excited to hear what you all have to say. Today, we are grading five episodes. Bang the Drum, Stanley, Older and Wiser, The Bloom is Off the Rose, Transplant, and love under the big top. I haven't filmed a Golden Grades episode in a few months. I don't actually remember where we were in the cheesecaking ranking. <laughs> Should have come prepared for my own video. I want to say that we're somewhere around three. We're all going to find out together when I edit this video and I will let you know if I'm right or wrong. So I'm going to say these are three cheesecakes out of five. Future Courtney, let's hope Past Courtney was right. Okay, let's get grading. Number 120 on our list is Older and Wiser from season six, episode 18. Dorothy lies to Sophia and says that she is going to be the activities director at the retirement home. It's a weird choice for Dorothy to make. Sophia is so excited to do that. It does give her meaning. It does give her agency and it gives her connection. The people in the home are having the best time that they've had in years. They're laughing, they're going out for walks, they're enjoying each other's company. They're not just sitting and languishing and just watching television. And when she finds out that it's all been a ruse because she is in there trying to make active change and the retirement home staff is just, he's not having it, and finally tells Sophia the truth, it breaks her heart. And it breaks my heart. I really love the message that this episode imparts on us. Mr. Lewis, you can speak. How come you haven't spoken before? No one was listening. Not until you got here. I've been here. Could have spoken to me. Well, I don't like you. <laughs> don't you see, Mr. Porter, you're not listening to these people. I mean, you're only as old as you feel, and you're making them feel old. And Pussycat, you make me feel old, too. You make me feel like I can't make my own choices. Ma, I worry about you. And everything I did here, well... Ma, it's because I'm afraid of losing you. I understand that, but Pussycat, give me air. I know you love me, but maybe we can make decisions about me together. Yes, Ma, we will. And if Dorothy had really sat down and thought about it, it was not for Sophia's own good. It was for Dorothy's own good. And in the comments below, I'd like to know if you feel comfortable sharing. What was a time that somebody said to you, you shouldn't do something for your own good? In a B plot of Blanche discovering modeling and her and Rose going through all of this only to discover that Rose's hands and Blanche is, they're being used for anti-aging cream. They're like the before <laughs> and they really thought they were gonna be the after. I think that that's enjoyable. And in some ways that almost could have been its own entire A plot in a separate episode. Like, BS, before and after pictures are total lie, right? Just, you ever just look at one and you're like, Wow, you guys really shot that before. In the dark, right after you had them eat 47, you know, hot dogs slathered in Nutella. Why, why did I come up with that combination? Oh my God! <laughs> What's the matter, Blanche? Oh my God! Oh, come on, no matter what, oh my God! <laughs> Number 119 on our list is Bang the Drum, Stanley, from season four, episode five. This is a perfect plot line for Stan and Sophia to bond over. Sophia the schemer, Stan the schemer. Stan always looking for the next big hit. Where is he gonna get his money? How's he maybe gonna con somebody and squirm his way in there? Yeah, Sophia, just the older, ladier version of 
stand. Rewatch, even slow motion it for yourself if you have to. That ball, when it's coming in, is absolutely nowhere near Estelle Getty when she pretends to get hit. That to me might be the funniest part of the whole episode. This Rose joke, which is maybe gonna tie for number one. That man has such a big mouth. <laughs> which reminds me, I wanna go give him a call. <laughs> Gosh, she's really a character. <laughs> she's also a cheap slug. <laughs> this tongue twister, which I didn't remember until I rewatched the episode for this Golden Grades. At the counseling center, we learned that the first reaction to catastrophe is denial. Rose, I am not in denial. Oh, yes, you are. You're just denying you're in denial. <laughs> Rose, I am not denying that I am in denial. If you're not denying you're in denial, then you're in denial. <laughs> Look, Fluffhead. <laughs> Why should I deny being in denial when I never said I was in denial? You are the one who said I was in denial, and don't you deny it. Also a crowd pleaser. Rose, don't be silly. Dorothy couldn't get a part. We're doing the award-winning musical Cats. You have to be agile, graceful, and sensual. You're right, Blanche. I mean, how could I possibly compete with you? I mean, you've given some of your finest performances in back alleys. <laughs> we talk about community theater a lot in our Golden Grades, and this episode, ding, 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 community theater comes back around to help us because the end of the episode has like a double con situation. Ah, it's, I've been lying the whole time. And then it's like, ha, 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 we've been lying to you the whole time. Where did they put the call out for these actors? Did Dorothy audition these actors from the community theater? Did they call the doctor ahead of time? And they're like, look, you have to actually just clear the deck. We're gonna just buy out between 11 and three. Did she pay them? Or did she say like, look, we need to teach my mom a lesson. I just, I wanna, I wanna know how that came about. The Arthur and her Bettelman, have really wonderful chemistry together. This episode definitely highlights that. Number 118 on our list is The Bloom is Off the Rose from season six, episode 18. On the one hand, Rose is trying to spice up her relationship with Miles. And on the other hand, Blanche, who is ordinarily very confident and secure with herself, is in an emotionally abusive relationship with Rex Huntington. Either one of these could have been their own plot lines. They were put together in this episode, I think because it highlights the kind of spectrum of extremes in a relationship. Rex, I'm a disgusting dirt bag. I should get run over by a Zamboni Huntington. He puts Blanche down. He emotionally uh, belittles her, calls her names, orders her around, gaslights her. I could go on and on. He is just gross. I don't really care as much about the Rose and the Miles relationship. Her story about the sex for four hours is great. My relationship with Miles is really getting boring. We even make love the same. How? <laughs> well, first he says, let's go watch TV in the bedroom. And then I think, wait, he doesn't have a TV in the bedroom. <laughs> And then he says, come lie down. I won't try anything. <laughs> then we have four hours of the most boring sex you've ever had in your life. I'm really focused on the Blanche and Rex and to a degree Dorothy Triangle because she is the conscience of Blanche and the episode saying, you deserve better. This is unacceptable. He's emotionally abusing you. Do not let this happen. You're better than this. I'm still your friend, I'm here to support you. It's really hard to watch this happen to you. And Blanche continues in the relationship for, I, you know, I'm not sure how long. I mean, at the beginning of the episode, Blanche is folding Rex Huntington's underwear and Rose and Dorothy talk about that he's stood her up a couple times. And then, you know, there's an allusion to maybe they've been going out for a couple weeks. I don't think that they've been together for more than say, three to four months tops. In that time, he's done real damage. And I wanna pause for a second because recently we have done a St. Olaf News special explainer style video about emotional abuse on this episode. 
I want to pause to acknowledge the comments and the sharing that has been taking place on that video particularly. The community has been wonderful to one another and supportive in sharing your experiences and validating the experiences of others. And it has made me so proud here at Stay Golden for us to be a vehicle and a safe space for people to be able to connect and share with one another. I just wanna say that I see you, I hear you, and we are here for you. In the context of this episode in our grading, the episode is not a hysterical episode. It is a very serious and real topic. Again, the Golden Girls were talking about this over 30 years ago. Still relevant today, still happening, still needs to be addressed. What I'm so happy about the episode is, is the way that Dorothy stands up to Rex. And in real life, we all need Dorothy's. Number 117 on the list is Transplant, Season 1, Episode 4. Rewatching this episode was like an archaeological dig. It had so many weird angles in the furniture, in the setup of the house. I'm absolutely in love with this like moment where Dorothy's at the door and you're like, okay, we're like parallel to the kitchen right now. Like I'm, I'm, I'm totally out of orbit. Blanche's sister Virginia is coming because, spoiler alert, she needs a kidney. Why would she need a kid to feed the cat rose? <laughs> okay, that just, that's really everything that's happening. In four episodes in, heavy topic for them to cover. And I realized again that this is one of the Blanche isn't good with family members overarching topic that we discussed in our special compilations number one. I, it's not like the, the jokes are great. It's to me, that the Golden Girls took a risk early on in their establishment of their humor and of their characters and of their world. I don't know, in the comments below, do you think Blanche would have gone through with the kidney transplant? I'm not convinced she would have. Also curious, has anybody in the Stay Golden community ever donated an organ? Possibly one of the best Southern jokes of all time? She's your sister. How can you hate your sister? Because she made me and my big sister Charmaine miserable our entire lives. I never heard of such a thing. You never heard of anybody hating their sister? Never. Maybe it's Southern. <laughs> Sleeping with your brothers is Southern. <laughs> Number 116 on the list is Love Under the Big Top, Season 5, Episode 5. Major guest star alert. Also, he gets to be a clown. How adorable is that? He's amazing in this episode, and I love just seeing him perform, and I think he has genuine chemistry with B. Arthur. That could have long-term been a relationship if they had decided to maintain it. I mean, granted, he was just a guest star, but maybe he could have come back at the uh, series finale instead of Mr. Lucas Hollingsworth. I could have seen it. Genuinely, I could have. This episode also has a bunch of like, little adorable gems. For example, this is the Save the Fish episode. Blanche in her famous water lily nickname? In the comments below, let me know, did you ever give yourself a nickname? I think that's one of those areas when like people are like, yeah, you know, they, they call me Sizzle. And you're like, well, how did you get that name? And you're like, um, because I I like to to make things go tss. I, someone's got to give it to you. I, is nickname the kind of thing that someone has to give to you? I don't really think you can give it to yourself. That is genuinely a weird thing. It's kind of one of its like, hey, we should care about the environment plot lines. And I mean, Golden Girl like occasionally talks about that. Like maybe, maybe when they're saving the lighthouse, they're also kind of worried about the environment. It's not something they got into quite regularly. And also Dick Van Dyke when he's a clown. I like that they use his clowning as a prop and a psych gag comedy when he comes into the courtroom to try and get the newly arrested Golden Girls off the, I was gonna say off the cuff, but that's not a thing. I would keep, make sure they don't go to jail. And he, you know, he's, he's pulling all the things out of it. Like that's a great use of Dick Van Dyke's talents. And I will say, I was really disappointed for Dorothy in this episode because I believed in the chemistry between the two of them. And I think that they genuinely could have been happy with one another. So happy relationship. And of course they had to go and like break them up because he's gonna go to the circus. I mean, of course, a man decides to join the circus instead of 
being with Dorothy's Bornick. That's like Sophia's just like, of course, that's that's my daughter's life. Congratulations, you made it to the end of another Golden Grades episode. Today I asked a lot of questions of everyone to answer in the comments below about nicknames and transplants and protests and relationships. I'm very excited to see what everyone has to say. Ooh, and Game of Thrones. If you're as always, thank you for being a friend, subscribing, watching, sharing, caring, commenting. I've been really happy and excited to read the comments and more and more, I'm just so grateful to have this community. We are almost at 25,000 subscribers. That was my goal for the year to get to 25,000 subscribers. <clears throat> it's not even May. I mean, when this launches, it's gonna be May. 